You've never done any dungeon, right? Okay, I have Radiance. Shield. Do I have Penance? I do have Penance. Shadow. Oh, I have Shadow of Death as well. Rue. Uh, I'm lagging. I'm lagging. I'm lagging. Like, I'm deceived. Oh no, don't you dare do this to me during my B-roll. Dude, <laughs> dude, are you <laughs> out of your mind? I just got to Let's cut off. Are oh, you DC. kidding me, dude? Go back in, go back in. Are you kidding me, dude? I just got in this piece. Yo, what's up, you guys? We're back with an update on the PvP gear and vendor system, as you are now able to acquire legendaries and conduits through PvP via that same vendor. Additionally, we may be getting a revamp on the vendor system, as it looks like much of the gear has been removed. Maybe Blizzard is watching some of these videos, I don't know. But we'll be going over all of that and what it potentially means, and we'll also quickly dive into some of the community responses to these changes. Also, as promised in my last video, I'm giving away a copy of Shadowlands and the winner of this giveaway is Drenskrev. Congratulations. Please reach out to me on Twitter to confirm your identity and we will set you up. Thank you guys all so much for killing it on that video. We got so many new subscribers, likes, comments because of that video, and I really appreciate you all doing your part in making a difference for the PvP community. Since that video, all the utility legendaries such as Leaper, the Warrior Mobility Legendary that you may have noticed in my Shadowlands Warrior review, or the Darkest Hour Legendary for Demon Hunters, which you may have also seen in my Shadowlands Demon Hunter review, well, those and many more recipes are now purchasable for honor on the PvP vendor. Now, this is a great change for PvPers as it will take up some of your item slots and will mean that many of your important utility legendaries will not have to come from other forms of PvE content if this is something that you're not interested in pursuing. You can also find many conduits on this vendor, which essentially are glyphs that are placed into your soulbind tree and alter many of your existing abilities. Now, at this point, it's very clear that the conduits on this vendor are indeed available through other forms of content. However, the legendaries appear to only be available at this point in the beta from the PvP vendor, meaning that if you're a PvEer and you want one of those legendaries, you may have to PvP in order to acquire them. Now again, these are mostly utility conduits and legendaries that won't have the biggest impact in PvE, but this has raised a bit of backlash on Wowhead from the PvE community. Many players are comparing this to the Blood of the Enemy grind or the Conflict and Strife grind that players had to endure to acquire specific essences in BFA. And while it is a little easy to poke fun at some of their complaints, which you can see here on the screen, I think it's important to note that all players should not be forced to pursue content for player power. If Blizzard really wants to encourage players to partake in other aspects of their game, they should do it only from a cosmetic standpoint, making it completely optional, but still offering incentive. One of the things that I'm really noticing from this whole situation is that there's a lot of division between the two communities, and somewhat rightfully so, because Maybe some PvPers don't really like to PvE, and maybe some PvEers don't really like to PvP. But it really does feel like these two communities are just butting heads and are angry at each other based on what Blizzard is doing in terms of how you acquire gear through specific content. And at the end of the day, I just want to say this. Blizzard, if you're listening or if anyone's out there, allow players to get rewards through the type of content that they enjoy. If players love to raid, Bring back tier sets so players can raid again and get a set of gear from raiding. If players love to do Mythic Plus and push high level keys, offer adequate gear for that. If players want to do Arena or PvP or Battlegrounds, reward them for that. Don't force players into doing types of content that they don't enjoy doing. At the end of the day, if you're trying to retain subscribers, the best way to do that is to incentivize the content that they enjoy. Yes, I know that this is an MMO. Yes, I've been playing this game since its birth, since vanilla. And what keeps people playing the game is the content that they actually enjoy doing. You have a lot of filler content with world quests, emissaries, your little mission table thing. Just let players do what they enjoy and reward them for that. And I promise they will stay much longer and stay subscribed and maybe that way you don't have to keep creating so many store mounts. Now perhaps the most exciting part of this video and these changes, there have been some changes to the gear that is available on the vendor as mentioned before. Maybe we got to them guys, I have no clue, but they have removed much of the gear on this vendor. And I also noticed that there's a ton of haste verse gear when it comes to leather wares, which is a great start. This has me believe that they're reviewing the gear and stats that are currently available on this vendor as many of the items are missing the initial three stat combinations and there are only singular items available. 
For example, prior to these changes, you would find three of each item with different stat combinations. You would find three bracers, three gloves, three helmets, you get the point. However, now you will only find one helmet, one pair of gloves, and so on. So I really think that this is an attempt to better itemize PvP gear, and perhaps we can see some additional changes to how PvP gear works in Shadowlands in player versus player combat. But don't get too excited as this is all just really speculation at this point. With that being said, I promise to keep you guys up to date with this whole situation as I know that this is something many of us are passionate about. So I wanna thank you guys again, and I wanna show you all that if we work together in a positive way, I know it's a little cheesy, but we can get the changes that we want to see. I really love this community and you guys seriously own. Now, for those of you wondering, I will be back on my class guides as soon as max level characters are released once again on the beta. I want to make sure I thoroughly test these classes rather than just putting out some baloney opinion that is not backed by any experience. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the new subscribers and I will see you all in the next one.